Well, the uh, the topic for today is. <clears throat> The, uh, today we're going to talk, uh, I'm postponing the linear equation to next time. Uh, instead, uh, I think it's a good idea since in real life most of the differential equations are solved by numerical methods to introduce you to those right away. Even when you see the computer, where you saw the computer screen, uh, the solutions being drawn, of course that what really was happening is that the computer was calculating the solutions numerically and plotting the points. So this is the main way, numerically is the main way differential equations are actually solved. They're out of any complexity at all. Now, so the problem is an initial value problem. Let's write it a first order problem the way we talked about it on Wednesday. Uh, and now I'll specifically add to that the starting point that you used when you did the computer experiments. And I'll write the starting point this way. So y of x0 should be y0. So this is the initial condition, and this is the first order differential equation. And as you know, the two of them together are called an IVP, an initial value problem, which means two things, the differential equation and the initial value uh, that you are <coughs> want to start the solution at. OK, the, uh, now the method we're going to talk about, the basic method of which many others are merely refinements in one way or another, is uh, called Euler's method. <clears throat> Euler, who did, of course, everything in analysis, didn't, as far as I know, didn't actually use it to compute solutions of differential equations. His interest was theoretical. Uh, he used it as a method of proving the existence theorem, that proving that solutions existed. But uh, nowadays, it's used to calculate the solutions numerically. And the method is very simple to describe. It's so naive. If you probably think that if you had been living 300 years ago, you would have discovered it and covered yourself with glory for all eternity. Here is, uh, so here is our starting point, uh, x0, y0. Now what information do we have? At that point, all we have is the little line element whose slope is given by f of x, y. So, if I start the solution, the only way the solution could possibly go would be to start off in that direction, since I have no other information. <clears throat> At least it has the correct direction at x0, y0, but of course it's not likely to have the correct direction anywhere else. Now what you do then is choose a step size. I'll draw just a few, uh, two steps of the method. That's, I think, good enough. Uh, you choose a step size, a uniform step size, which is usually called h. And you continue that solution until you get to the next point, which will be x0 plus h, as I've drawn it on the picture. So we get to here. Uh, we stop at that point, And now you recalculate what the line element is here. Suppose here the line element now through this point goes like that. Well, then that's the new direction that you should start out with going from here. And so the next step of the process will carry you to here. That's two steps of Euler's method. Notice it produces a broken line approximation to the solution. But in fact, you only see that broken line if you're at a computer, if you're uh, looking at the computer visual, for example, which is whose purpose is to illustrate for you Euler's method. In actual practice, what you see is uh, just 
the computer is simply calculating this point, that point, that point, and the succession of points, and many programs will just automatically connect those points by a smooth-looking curve if uh, that's what you prefer to see. Well, that's, that's all there is to the method. Uh, what we have to do now is derive the equations for the method. <clears throat> now, how are we going to do that? Well, the essence of it is how to get from the nth step to the n plus first step. So I'm going to draw the, a picture just to illustrate that. So now we're not at x0, but let's say we've already gotten to xn, yn. How do I take the next step? Well, I take the line element, and it goes up like that, let's say, because the slope is uh, this. I'm going to call that slope a sub n. Of course, a sub n is the value of the right-hand side at the point x, n, y, n, and we'll need that in the equation. But I think it will be a little clearer if I just give it a capital letter at this point. Now, how this is the new point, and all I want to know is what are its coordinates? Well, the x, n plus 1 is there. The y, n plus 1 is here. Clearly, I should draw this triangle, complete the triangle. This side of the triangle, this, the hypotenuse has slope a n. This side of the triangle has length h. h is the step size. Perhaps I better uh, indicate that, actually put that up so that you know the word. Step size, it means how f it's the step size on the x-axis, how far you have to go to get from each x to the next one. What's this? Well, if that slope has this, the slope a n, this is h then this must be h times a n, the length of that side, right? In order that the ratio of the height to this width should be a n. And that gives us the method, what's the, how do I get from, uh, the, the, clearly, uh, to get from x n to x n plus 1, I simply add h. So that's the trivial part of it. The interesting thing is, how do I get the new y n plus 1? And so the best way to write it as that yn plus 1 minus yn divided by h, well, yn, sorry, yn plus 1 minus yn is, is this line the same as the line h times an. So that's the way to write it. Or since the computer is interested in calculating yn plus 1 itself, put it, this on the other side. It, you take the old yn, the previous one, and to it you add h times an. And what, pray tell, is an? Well, the computer has to be told that an is the value of f. So now, with that, let's actually write the Euler program. Not the program, but the Euler, the Euler method equations. Let's just call it the Euler equations. What will they be? First of all, the new x is the old x plus h. The new y is just what I've written there. The old y plus h times a certain number a n. And finally, a n has the value. It's the slope of the line element here. And therefore, by definition, that's f of x n y n. So it's these three equations which define Euler's method. If I assume in 100, surely you must be uh, asked 